Hi, this is Professor Jay again, and today we're going to talk about the statement of cash flows. What you see in front of you is essentially a cheat sheet that I developed because a lot of times when you see the rules for the statement of cash flows, they're a little rough around the edges. So, here is my cheat sheet, and we're going to talk about what exactly you're looking at, and then we're actually going to work a few examples to help you get through the problems you might have to work later. So, here goes. First of all, what you see is, if you look at the black ink, you see the three sections of a statement of cash flow. Cash can change hands in a company for one of three reasons. It can change due to operating activities, which is the day-to-day -day events of the company, the things you're in business to do. Or they can change because you're investing in the company. Investing does not mean buying stocks and bonds here. When we're talking the statement of cash flows, it means investing in ourselves by buying long-term assets such as a car or a truck or factory equipment to help us generate more income. We're investing in ourselves. So when we say cash provided or used by investing activities, we're always talking long-term assets only. And then the last sections, cash provided or used up by financing activities. This is where we pay for those long-term assets. How did we do it? And how do we pay back our owners? That's where the dividends come into play. So essentially, almost everything on the statement of cash flows is going to go into the operating activities section. Because how often do we buy long-term assets for investing? Not that often. And financing is done fairly rarely as well. So the biggest section on the statement of cash flows is usually the operating activity section. So a good idea at this point is to freeze your screen in this video and take a screenshot of this page. Print it out as a cheat sheet and use it to work problems that are statement of cash flows because I'm going to have to delete this to move on. So here goes. You have a second, second to freeze the screen and Print it out. Now, assuming that you're looking at the cheat sheet you just printed out, the first line is net income. We're going to cover a few of the rules that will help you work statement of cash flows issues and put one together. First of all, you always start with net income. Why? Because net income is an accrual based figure and we're using something called the indirect method. There is both a direct and an indirect method of doing a statement of cash flows. I'm only planning on covering the indirect method simply because that's the one that most people use. So, this indirect method starts with net income and then takes out all the accrual based effects to come back from accrual income to cash income. So how do we do that? First of all, let's look at the very first line after net income, which says plus or minus the change in current asset. That little triangle means change. It's a delta. And for those of you who've taken a physics class, you've seen that before. It means the same thing here. So plus or minus the change in current assets. Let's think about that. Plus or minus the change in current assets. If you have, let's just pick a current asset, accounts receivable. So we have an account receivable of $10,000 in year one. And then in year two, we have an account receivable that happens to say $8,000. Hmm. Change in current assets is a negative 2000, correct? Well, do we add that back or do we subtract it? It's a negative. You'd think subtract it. Hmm. So what is an account receivable? It is an IOU. Someone gave you a stack of papers saying they owed you money. That is your accounts receivable. It's a stack of IOUs. If the IOUs 
decrease. If you have fewer IOUs, what happened? Well, if less people owe you money, what caused that to happen? They actually had to pay you to make the IOU go away. So what we're looking at here is as a current asset decreases, cash increases. So we would add $2,000 to net income due to a change in accounts receivable. But let's try a different current asset and see how that works, if the rule still sticks. Okay, here we have inventory in year one of $25,000 and inventory in year two of $40,000. Well, we have a current asset that went up by $15,000. So, what did it take to buy that inventory? We had to buy it with cash. So, did our cash go up or down? Do we have more or less cash? Well, we basically swapped cash for inventory. So, our inventory went up, our cash goes down. So, doesn't that follow the same rule as below? There, our current assets went down. Here, our current assets went up. So our cash goes down. It's essentially the same rule, just in reverse. Assets and cash move in opposite directions. You now have plus or minus a change in current liabilities is the next line. Do we add those or subtract those? Okay, let's look at accounts payable year one, accounts payable year two. And we'll say that we had we owed fifteen thousand in year one. We owe twenty thousand in year two. So there's an increase in current liabilities. They went up from year one to year two. Okay, what would cause our accounts payable to increase? Well, accounts payable means our bills. The only way our accounts payable would increase is if we're not paying our bills, correct? And if we're not paying our bills, we have more cash in our pocket because we're not spending it to pay our bills. So as li current liabilities go up, guess what? Our cash goes up as well.